Okay, so uh, the Swiss variant interpretation platform for oncology. Um, I don't have a list of like what uh, went well and what didn't went well. The things will pop up during my talk and I will mention them when they are visible. So for instance, one thing that I can recommend for projects is that soon on uh, start having a branding. So we uh, uh, hired a small company to uh, produce a logo. So this logo here, uh, and the, I mean the name came from the proposal, but the logo here has already caught, already caught on. Have a website, have a Twitter or a channel that you like to do, but you have to use that stuff. So if you have a Twitter channel, you have to feed it, which we're not really doing. So uh, you will see my Twitter handle and not the sweep one. But the logo was, was something really good to do. And now we can start actually getting people used to the logo. So what's the big deal? This is Bob. Bob has a hard job. He's a molecular pathologist. Uh, the reason why his job is hard is he sits at the receiving end of a funnel of information that drops on his desk. And uh, the goal of Bob's job is to assess whether the tumor genome of a patient might have an influence or a decisive uh, uh, characteristic for the clinical application, for the treatment of the patient. So when uh, Bob starts his work, he has a plethora of places where he can go and check out what may this or that variant mean. Uh, these places do not necessarily need to converge on their opinion. Uh, and some, some places are uh, databases that can be queried. Uh, other places are maybe a little bit harder to query because their uh, information is more unstructured. And then we have also places which do not have variant annotations, but they contain information about uh, clinical trials or maybe research context, and also, of course, publications. Because in the end, it's the reference to a clinical trial that makes the triplet of a disease, a variant, and the potential treatment meaningful. So there's a lot of work to make sense out of this ecosystem of information that we have available publicly. So, of course, this needs to be super fast. It needs to be efficient. And also it needs to be totally correct. So you see, Bob is kind of in a conundrum here. We have all these broad information available at our, at our fingertips. While we have no time, uh, we need to tackle a lot of cases and it, of course, needs to be correct. So in 2015, the SIB launched a working group coming out of the clinical bioinformatics team for somatic mutation calling. We invited the notorious players in the field of cancer diagnostics uh, to meet up with them. And uh, we also invited a couple of bioinformatics groups. And I had the pleasure to be um, co-chairing this working group. So what we did, we basically fed them a lot of coffee and sandwiches. Um, and by the way, thank you to the catering service in Bern University for this. And we kind of asked them, what, what, what would you need? Just like, like on, a, on a topical uh, level, what would you need to kind of improve variant interpretation using informatics and NGS and all that stuff? And we came up with a kind of like a wish list uh, where we crystallized six points from this wish list. What they said, let's have a joint repository. And I believe that this will improve the speed because instead of going to several databases of which some are your favorite ones and others are the ones that your boss uh, said you have to go or the other way you just read a publication about it, why, not why don't we have a querying tool where all these places are uh, likewise represented? So a joint repository. 
everybody would like to join into the battle of, of, of fighting cancer on a global scale. How we don't have time to post the variants that we observe in our hospital. That was a typical statement. I, would I use Cosmic every day, but I've never uploaded anything to it. That was a state, that's, that's just how it is. They don't have time for it. And it's, in the end, it's not their job. But of course, it's a fruitful reciprocity. If they see something, they, they, they actually uh, uh, make it more meaningful by adding an interpretation, then by all means, they should upload it. But they don't have time. So if we support them by making it more efficient, by having an uploading tool, right on the system without them to, they, they, they simply click on one button and that's it. In the meantime, they also have, a, they will probably also have a button where it says, this variant you're not allowed to post, but we'll see. I'll cook them some more. Trusted validation. Okay, so this is a very interesting point. It's at the core of the SWIP platform. Now, what, what I mean with trusted validation, there is two layers to that. There is the more bioinformatics or more like a curational aspect of validating a variant. So actually we observe a variant in a tumor genome and then we go out and we look at the databases, we look at the literature, kind of like a part of what Bob is doing usually. But then also they want us to take this annotation, put it in front of healthcare practitioners and ask them, do you think that makes sense? And then this, these experts, they will decide and say, yes, I actually agree with this interpretation of this variant. And then we have a clinically validated uh, interpretation for a given variant. Of course, in the context of other things like disease type. So this trusted validation thing comes also with something else. And that's kind of like communication. So what the pathologist, let's call him Fred, in, let's call it A-Town, if he observes a variant, he logs into SWIP, and then he sees that this variant has been observed before in B-Town by Bob, he actually wants to pick up his phone, call up Bob, and ask him, hey, you, have that, you had that patient uh, uh, 11 months ago, he has the same mutation like my patient has right now. How did you treat him? How did you respond on it? Being able to communicate like this, of course, requires us to record when these variants occur and in which place. That's new. That's, that, these are the things that Civic, ClinVar, and other places don't have. They only have metadata. And actually going forward with SWIP, as you will see, we will also collect data. Mutually approved annotation. So uh, not only will this be in the production version resolved by the expert panel, of course, we will need to have a ramp up in the beginning where we collect data from different places. And then we actually will start into the curational effort of having uh, uh, mutually approved annotations for these variants. And uh, I can tell you from our previous work in the working group, where we did a re round robin trial, that some annotations are not mutually approved at the moment. This brings me to the discrepancy management. So, and uh, we had the maximum entropy possible in this round robin trial, meaning, we had one variant that was scored as pathogenicity uh, pathogenic and pathogenicity benign by one center and the other center. And in the end, we found out it's actually a typical artifact by ion torrent machines. That's exactly why we need this discussion between the centers. Because ultimately, what we want is that if you go to a hospital that actually the interpretation of your variance is not depending on your geographical location by going to a hospital, but on your tumor genome. Annotation and interpretation of variance in cancer is a moving target. These annotations change on a daily basis. Most databases have update cycles from one week or maybe, maybe a month. 
So uh, one point on the wish list was also that if I'm signing up a patient by, by actually submitting this patient's variants into SWIFT, I want to be notified if one of these variants is uh, changing from a variant with unknown significance to pathogenic right away. So this notification system can be from we send you a thousand emails a day to filtering down. So at the moment we're discussing the process of how we can filter out these notifications. Okay, so Daniel, but what does this practically speaking means? Because in the end we're trying to do this for Bob. So all these kind of qualitative uh, topics I just listed amount to a place where I can upload something. I need something where we can make meaning or where, where we can add meaning to what was uploaded. And I need a place where I can draw stuff out of the database again. Ideally, this is all in one place. Uh, I just call the front end for the technical verse people. And this uh, is just the things we see. That's the thing where you log in or uh, for the tech savvy where we use our API towards. Uh, what we also need for the data is a place where we can put the variants. We need a place where we can put all the evidence that we, that we crawl from the internet and from databases and maybe from hospitals further down the road. Um, speaking about the potential leverage we will have through SPHN, and the place where we can put the interpretations by our curators and our expert panels. Uh, summarizing this as the back end part. And ideally, because not all these data types and these uh, tools will have the same, uh, the same look. So for instance, in the curational interface, you may have a totally different look than in the public retrieval interface. Uh, and it will also maybe look different than the clinical submission interface. So in the middle, we have an API uh, that enables us to talk with these different elements in the system. But that's not all, because these are just the tools and these tools need to be filled. So we are counting on our partnering in, uh, medical institutions in that case, that they deliver us with the data ramp up. As I said, we need an initial kind of dump of variant information, especially to find out what will be the efforts of the curational effort to harmonize this data, and also to learn from this data what do they actually want? Because it's usually quite hard by a domain expert to crystallize out how his algorithm, I mean, his algorithm uh, is working when he's deciding on the interpretation of a variant. So what we ask them to do is to provide us with the raw VCF files from their, uh, from their benches, from their, from their uh, uh, calling suits, and then also, on top of that, giving us the list of the variants they selected for reporting and why. And based on this, we try to learn uh, what are reasons to basically include a variant or exclude a variant, and what are they looking for. And this is important information for our curational, curation experts to move ahead. The aggregated evidence, uh, you know that one from before. So at the moment, we're basing a lot of our work on the G2B aggregator that was developed at uh, OHSU. It's a public tool on GitHub. Um, we uh, had a lot, of, um, a lot of positive developments going on there. Now we kind of diverge, we branch off too much from it, so we have to see how we're going to continue with this. On the publication side, we're uh, working together with, uh, with my co-PI, Patrick Rue. Uh, he's an expert for text mining, and this will be to extract evidence from uh, publications for the curators, but also to highlight the most important sections in the publication 
for the molecular pathologist once we have assigned a publication as a bit of important evidence for a certain variant disease combination. I already said that for the trusted validation, we will compose a expert panel, which in the beginning will be uh, recruited from our partnering hospitals. Uh, this will include selecting a broad array of experts. I'm not only speaking about solid tumors. We also have a very strong uh, group of hemato-oncologists in SWIP. The back end and front end is co-developed by my group and Vital IT. Uh, we have uh, a lot of support from uh, Civic in Washington and Uncle Katie in New York. These groups, they are totally open about uh, collaborating on code bases, on extending existing tools with things that we might need. Uh, they are also interested in actually bringing in the dimension of having actual data in their databases because they get asked by hospitals to provide that. Uh, so uh, this is certainly one thing I would like to add here as an advantage or something that you should aim for is to, to collaborate on a global scale, to basically go out there and ask the groups that are doing similar stuff early on because that helped us to decide on a system and move forward with the framework, uh, especially with, resp uh, with uh, respect to the G2B aggregator, that helped us a lot to, to formulate the vision. Even if we're now kind of moving away from their original code, but this is also something that can uh, grow over time and we can feed back our developments and our insights into their uh, future versions. Eventually, we hope that the hospitals will sub start submitting uh, variants to SWIP. This will be basically then the production version of the database. Of course, production version in air quotes, it will be the testing after we have had the first implementation year uh, as an infrastructure development project. Uh, I will give you more details on that in a second. Curation. We will, we will base the curational aspects on the ample experience that SIB has with curating databases and maintaining databases. Uh, we already have hired a very qualified curation expert. She is working uh, at a mind-boggling pace on developing the curation process. And I'll speak more about process in a second. Ultimately, the retrieval will be mainly designed and developed for Bob. So the molecular pathologist who actually needs to do his job efficient, fast, and correct. But we are an SPHM project. So we actually branch off a research layer on the database where we will uh, omit certain aspects of the data. For instance, for a research perspective, it's not essential to know where 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 variants were observed, it's enough that they were observed. We are in the process of discussing this with the host institutions, with the partnering institutions, which bits of information can we publish uh, with researchers. Also, what we can publish is probably a moving target, which is trying to converge on a common agreement what is possible. So, I spoke about the tools, then I spoke about what we try to feed into and where it comes from. Behind all these things, there are processes. Some of them are easy. I mean, I love this process. That's sim simply version control to develop the, the, the front end to, to, to uh, uh, deal with aggregated evidence. That's easy. Uh, the website where we land and we authenticate, we have a customization layer, so you only see what you really like, and then you might get a report on a variant. That's also easy. Uh, also, the submission layer. So we will have a web interface. You can submit single VCF, so upload a file even there. Then we have an API. We will need to define a generic feedback, kind of like a DB snapshot you get when you upload a VCF. These are the easy processes. 
Then we have the hard processes. So for instance, the interpretation going from the data, we prioritize, we have to curate, then the expert panel needs to find a decision. Now, this is like herding cats, come on. An expert panel of medical doctors and they have to agree on something? Good luck with that one. But that's the process behind this part. Here you see the actual slide. I was talking, I was telling you, we have this curator and she set up this slide. This is the curation process uh, with lots of details. And she's like, there's so much we need to take care of. And the dimensionality suddenly explodes in your face. We have 10 different diseases. And then suddenly we speak about combinations of variants. And then, yeah, it's a geometric development, you know? And down here, and uh, this is my first kind of like take home message. This is the process kind of in a sketchy way, how we get the first variants out of the hospitals. And that has been the, the largest roadblock also. So uh, while in the beginning it sounded really easy and everybody agreed to, yeah, we will deliver our variants. Suddenly when it got more concrete, the willingness to deliver variants was still there, but suddenly it said, yeah, okay, so now we need to speak with legal about this. And suddenly everything was totally different. And uh, we, also had, uh, we also had an interesting experience because there was, this, there was this moment where suddenly everybody said, yeah, but we need to coordinate. We need to coordinate collecting data from the hospitals. And I, I fully agree with that. I fully agree with that. That makes sense. And we submitted ourselves to this coordination process. And so far, not, not much else happened. Luckily, we have our nice hematologists. And uh, we are pushing ahead with those. In the end, all these discussions, all the coordination is is amounting to having bilateral MTIs, material transfer agreements, and bilateral uh, contracts with, the, with each institution. That's, that's how we are progressing at the moment. And that's how we are progressing. So we are... Short before uh, collecting data from the first institution, and I hope that eventually we can show off enough performance on the floor to uh, convince other institutions to push their legal to do it. So that's certainly one of the largest challenges we had so far. Now, where do we fit into SPHN? So one aspect is we have additional funding for SWIP from Biomed IT. The reason being that the idea to have a harmonized and mutually approved repository for variants, clinical variants in Switzerland, seemed like a, a good idea for a central resource, irrespective of the research, uh, the, the research parts that we might have on top, like for instance, automatic variant prioritization or text mining, uh, but simply the database layer below, that seemed like a uh, worthwhile endeavor. But there's more. I believe also that other infrastructure projects, like for instance, na natural language processing for tumor classifications uh, or the other infrastructure development projects, they can easily be implemented directly into SWIFT. So if they produce tools, if they produce algorithms that help us, for instance, uh, estimate pathogenicity uh, or similar uh, in silico, um, thing, I mean, na natural language processing is for health records, maybe a little bit harder to obtain for SWIP, but eventually these products can flow into SWIP and be live displayed there. I will show you in the live demo uh, what I mean with being displayed there. Then we do have our participating institutions. Uh, there we have two groups. We have the molecular pathology and the hemato-oncology groups, which are mostly interested in these uh, cancer variant uh, interpretations. 
I present you today, today SWIP O for oncology. We uh, brand everything with SWIP, just Swiss Variant Interpretation Platform, because we intend to go to medical genetics as well eventually. Use the infrastructure that we're building now to also serve this third uh, community in the hospital. But nevertheless, we've been claimed that we are not actually research. We are more like quality assurance, which is improving existing systems, uh, processes, and diagnostics. And we can live very well with this, uh, because in the end, we believe that other oncology driver projects, like SOSIP or SPO, they can excellently, is that a word, excellently? They can perfectly profit from what we're doing here because our interpretations, they can be seamlessly integrated into the uh, SOSIP reporting and into the SPO tumor board uh, frameworks. So this is where SWIP, what, 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 what would come out of SWIP. So now, I would like to give you all and the remote viewers a brief glimpse at where we stand, because we do have an actual working pilot system. So this is the landing page of SWIP. As it comes at the moment, we have an uh, active search field. Yeah, don't laugh, two genes. It's just a pilot system. So it's on type search, so we can just, I can start entering a variant here. And it will show us what's around for it. So I will go for it with one of the most well-known ones. I can select this variant, and then I end up with this uh, search result page. On the top, you see kind of like the static information for such a variant. We have the HGVS uh, gene and protein names, the dbSNP uh, ID. Then we have a block called SWIP information. And uh, I want to point out that's fake data at the moment. It's just, just to show what it could look like. And it will look different. This is work in progress. So uh, what we basically can have with the SWIP information is exactly things like uh, frequency, distribution of age, if we get that bit of information, gender balances, and of course, eventually something like a SWIP confidence level we have. So uh, we'll see whether we have stars or bars or whatever, doesn't matter. Simply that we will have something there eventually. And the status for the variant with respect to the curation or expert panel uh, status of this uh, variant. Of course, then we have the public information. At the moment, we have set up the harvester specific in Onco KB. So if I click here on show details, I see all the evidence from Civic displayed for V600E. Let's select a cancer type here to boil that down a little bit. So I get these information bits. And if I click here on one of these information bits, I get taken directly to Civic and immediately can um, look at all the information available there. Bomb, exactly. Good. Down here, this is what I meant. Here we can have additional information displayed. This is just a suggestion how we could do it. A proposal to uh, display the impact prediction or polymorphism prediction uh, by accessing XAC or GNOMAD. Uh, and here we could also have other tools that have been developed in the process of SPA Gen up until now or at a later stage. Okay, so this is basically where we are at the moment. And in the background, a gazillion things happen with respect to processes, as I said. And here I want to give you a brief overview. So on the variant side, I already complained about it. Legal, legal help. So if somebody is, uh, has, has an idea who can provide us with more variants, please contact me. My name is uh, Daniel Steckhoven and steckhoven at swip.ch. Uh, aggregated evidence, there we are on a really good one. So at the moment, uh, you've seen the, the front end uh, has al already a shiny new look. 
which it received from y to yt. The, the, the algorithms are nicely uh, developing. We're adding new DBs at the moment, like Clinmar and Cosmic, uh, CGI, uh, Molecular Match, and all these things will come eventually uh, until we have adapted them to our own schema. Here, collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. It's been fantastic so far how these people are open everywhere, in Spain, in the US, in Britain, to collaborate with us. And we are uh, schema, we are converging on a schema. We started off with the idea to simply adopt one, like the civic server schema, but then we realized we are too special with the variants and the actual data. So we started with a bottom-up approach, building our own schema, and hope that we can converge as much as possible. On the interpretation, so here we're still, so expert panel and curation process. Here we're working on the structure. How do we constitute this, the process? And uh, we also haven't started developing the, the front end for the expert panel because, I mean, we need to have a nice and efficient web-based, ideally on, a, on such a device running expert panel revision tool. So that they can, when they have a coffee break, briefly review a couple of variants while they are not working on a patient. So uh, this system that uh, will need a lot of attention. Retrieval, we're also on a good way here. So uh, that's what I just show you. Basically, this will be the retrieval. And uh, this will be the public flavor. And uh, we're working now on the clinical flavor together with curation, together with the clinical partners. And uh, one big deal we will have is the customization. So that basic, based on your login, probably also on storing local data on your device, you can select which database do you want to see and which, which databases you're not interested in. And whether you want to actually see pathogenicity as a column in your uh, SWIP layout, or whether you're not interested in pathogenicity, you only care about clinical relevance. So because we have like, a, we, everybody wants to see everything. No, not everybody wants to see everything, but if we make the union, it's, uh, we, have, we have 40 columns to display. And that's it's not working. And then we realized that actually, solid tumors want to see this part, and uh, the hematologists want to see the other part with some overlap in the middle. So this is why we believe that going with with a customizable layout will be the trick to do it. On the curation side, again, the process of curation, the interface for the curators. So what we display them to do their job efficiently and fast and correct. And then finally, to, to, to really arrive at the meaningful process, we need data. Again. And the submission system, we haven't started yet. But there is only a red light here because in the beginning we thought that we will start with the submission system and end with the retrieval system. And now we did it the other way around. Uh, so this is uh, it's not, no big deal, the red light. So in summary, SWIP as a infrastructure development project is on track. The biggest roadblock was the data collection part which we hope, where we still kind of like are below Damocles sword because we don't know how many institutions will provide us data. In one case, we are happy because legal signed it off, but we haven't, the, the document wasn't signed so far. But uh, that was the, that, that's the biggest problem we have uh, at their hands. And the most important key point is discussion. I believe that one of the reasons why SWIP is on track, while we had the opportunity to progress at a good pace, is because this project started actually in 2015, when we formed the working group at SIB, and we started discussing. So the whole requirements engineering took us two years, and then, out of this group came the idea of the infrastructure project SWIP. And that's kind of, that was the reason we started discussing, finding out what's needed. How can we help them? 
And we listened to these people. We listened to the molecular pathologists and to the hemato-oncologists. What, what are they doing? And at the moment, we're still learning from them. I mean, we've been curating variants in flies, bees, and worms like the last 25 years. But actually curating variants for a, the specific reason of treating a patient, that's something we haven't done too much. So at the moment, we need to learn from these people how to do this job. And then we can add, on top of learning that, our expertise with curation and technical matters. So discussion as a key point. So uh, I would like to, end, I mean, here you see the, the diversity we have. These, these are the seven medical institutions that are supporting our project, including the two societies for pathology and molecular pathologies. And uh, also, I would like to acknowledge the people from my group, Faisal and Vipin, uh, Patrick's group uh, with Emily Page, Anais and Deborah from ESSO, uh, Valerie at Clinical Bioinformatics of SIB with Florent Tassi and Valerie Inar, and Robin Lierti and uh, the newest kid on the block, Frédéric Burde uh, at Vital IT. And thank you also to all the members of the SIB working group. And finally, I also need to thank my wife for allowing me to finish these slides yesterday. Thank you, and I'm really looking forward to your questions. <laughs>